wrong in my life There is none of greater worth Than the joy that's arrived In my own soul's rebirth So I laugh and I sing About all the joy you bring And my heart is full of praise I'm so thankful for your grace And I sing glory, glory, hallelujah Glory, glory, hallelujah On the day that I die and my soul came alive how my heart it had changed all my motives rearranged now i see truth so clear i no longer have to fear i'm surrounded by your grace it is you that wins the race and i sing glory glory Sacrifice, I was bought with the price. All the pain you endured, my salvation is secured. In the blood that you shed, a crown of thorns upon your head. And the stone was rolled away, Christ has risen from the grave. So we sing, glory, glory. is a collective portrait painted in words by the subjects themselves. Like all portraits, the composite effect depends in large degree on the angle of vision of this the artist. No, this is no, this is no, That's this such is a good no, smell. This is no simple reform. It really is a revolution. This is a collective portrait painted in words. This is no, 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 this is no simple reform. It really is a revolution. This is a collective portrait painted in words. This is no, this is no, this is no, this is no, this is no simple reform. It really is a revolution, a revolution, a revolution, a revolution, a revolution, a revolution, a revolution.
Meet Mr. Nice Guy. You think you're nice? This guy is really nice. Well, I try to do what's right. He's so nice that if good people get to heaven, he'll be the first in line. Ah, shucks. So, Mr. Nice Guy, have you kept the Ten Commandments? Pretty much. Do you mind if we take a look at them and maybe see how nice you really are? Uh, okay. Great. Here's one. You shall not lie. Mr. Nice Guy, have you ever told a lie? Well, yeah. Who hasn't? What do you call somebody who tells lies? A liar. All right. How about another commandment? You shall not steal. Have you ever stolen anything, even once? Nope. But you just told me you're a liar. Well, I, I did steal some candy once when I was a kid. And what do you call someone who steals? A thief. All right, let's try another one. You shall not commit adultery. Oh, that's easy. I'd never cheat on my wife. Hi, handsome. Oh, baby! <clears throat> Jesus said, if you even look at a woman with lust, you've already committed adultery with her in your heart. Oh, uh, right. One more. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Have you ever used God's name to curse? Oh, my... That, Mr. Nice Guy, is called blasphemy. God gave you life and breath and everything you have, and you've dragged his name through the dirt. So, by your own admission, you're a liar, a thief, a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart. And that's just four of the Ten Commandments. Okay, okay, so I'm not perfect. Well, actually, it's worse than that. Suppose we could put a chip in your brain that would record all your private thoughts for an entire week and then play those thoughts on a giant movie screen for all your friends and family to see. That would be embarrassing. Yeah, I know. The Bible says God knows everything, even the secret thoughts of your heart. Well, compared to some people, I'm a saint. Yeah, that's true. But the standard is God's law, not other people. Besides, even if you sin just five times a day in one year, that's 1,825 sins. And if you live to be 70 years old, you'll have broken God's law over 127,000 times. You'll have to answer for every sin on Judgment Day when the Bible says each of us will give an account of himself to God. But God will forgive me, right? Well, let's try that in court. Hey, look, I know I keep breaking the law, but hey, catch up. Well, you know, just let it slide. Only a corrupt judge would buy that. A good judge would say, Justice demands that you pay for your crimes. God's not a corrupt judge. He's a holy, righteous judge. He hates sin. Jesus warned that on Judgment Day, everyone who had sinned against God would justly end up in a terrible place called hell. And there will be no escape for all eternity. Uh, well, then how can anybody get to heaven? There's only one way. God loved the world so much that he sent his son Jesus to live a perfect life. He never sinned, not even once. Then Jesus offered to take the punishment for guilty sinners. He was whipped and beaten, and nailed to a cross, and died so that justice would be served, and sinners could go free. Then Jesus rose from the grave and defeated death. You can't earn eternal life. It's God's gift to everyone who will humble themselves and come to Jesus. He'll forgive you, wash you clean, and give you a new heart with new desires. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. So stop living for yourself. Turn from your sins and come to Jesus. Then read your Bible and obey it. Find a good church to help you grow. And then go out and tell other people the good news. Action. All right.
What's up guys, my name is Jake Hershey. I'm originally from Bricktown, New Jersey, residing in Ebbingdon, Maryland right now, age 21. Uh, I've been riding scooters for 10 years. I started riding a long time ago, uh, back when the sport wasn't really too popular. Um, my friend Jesse Macaluso actually got me into it. I was skateboarding and riding BMX at the time. I saw him doing some backflips and crazy stuff like that, and I decided uh, that's what I wanted to do. Got a scooter for Christmas, opened it up, started riding since then. Um, I went along, did it, I competed a few times uh, at the Incline Club competitions. Never really did any more than that. Eventually, I decided I wanted to start riding BMX a little more again, so I started riding that, did that for about a year and a half. Uh, then I realized, you know, my heart is with scootering. I'll be building 
hopped back on the scooter, started doing it again, made uh, all my old friends back, made some new friends from there on. Um, eventually, I kind of got involved in the wrong group of people, uh, and it kind of kind of brought my mindset to a different spot that it needed to be in. Um, I started using drugs, I uh, started drinking a lot of alcohol, and eventually it caught up to me. I got kicked out of my parents' house, I uh, lost my job, and uh, everything just went downhill. And it, was, it was not good uh, for me, for my friends around me, uh, for kids that looked up to me, it wasn't that good. Um, and eventually uh, I was asked to join a band, and you know my love for music I said, yeah, it was, a, it was a Christian rock band, a worship band, at uh, this church called Building on the Rock in Manchester, New Jersey. The band is called Waiting for the Flood. And it's a really cool band. The guys in there are all great guys. And we played some shows uh, out of state and in like New York and retreats and stuff. And they got me to start reading the Bible. And you know, at the time, I was like, the Bible, what is this stupid stuff? I guess I'll read it if you're going to make me. So I read it, and uh, you know, the, the verse that sticks out to me the most in that first session of reading my Bible was uh, don't worry about the troubles of uh, tomorrow because today has enough trouble of its own. Let tomorrow worry about itself. And that, that kind of hit me. Like, you know, you're right. I mean, I've been, I've been worrying too much and not focusing on the right things. And the time is here and the time is now. And eventually I started learning more and reading my Bible more. And eventually one night, you know, I just felt the hand of God come down on me and touch me. And it was that night that I put down the drugs, I put down smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol and all that stuff. I put it down and I put it down for good because the only thing that I see good in this world now is Jesus. And, you know, he saved me from all that bad stuff, turned my life around. My parents welcomed me back into their house. I'm still living with them today. I got a great job. I'm traveling the world. I'm announcing the International Scooter Association final soon. And, uh, you know, God really taught me how to work hard for the things that you need in life. And that's really all I'm trying to convey in this message is uh, Jesus is there to have your back. And, and God gives to those who work hard for you. I've been riding since 2001, so that makes it about 12 years, 2013. Um, one of the biggest reasons I started riding is I saw a commercial with uh, Jared Reed. He did a backflip, and uh, what else did he do? He did a he aired out a hip, and I was like, yo, that's crazy! And scooters were coming out, everybody's getting them for Christmas, so I decided to get a razor. My friend, uh, I think he got like a skater, and then there was oxygen, like a whole bunch of bootlegs. His broke in like a week. Um, I kept with the razor. And, you know, uh, I just loved it. I loved scootering the most more than skateboarding and BMX. A lot of people were like, oh, it's easy to do, tow or whatever. But the, the main thing I did it is because you can learn tricks that nobody else has ever created. Like, there was no booklet on tricks. So I can make up my own move and, and name it. And, like, you know, there's a video from, like, I believe, like, 03 when I was 13 where I did a manual with a hill flip. Like, I haven't seen anybody even do that since. So, like, that's where I'm saying my creativity comes from. Um, and it's just fun. It's a great thing to do. And it's different. Me being a black guy on a scooter, even in college, I always stood out. People ended up hating at first, and then they ended up showing love. So, you know, scooter's just a part of me. I mean, when I'm old and have kids on the scooter, they can go scooter. We can go scoot.
bigger than Scooter, ain't bigger than anything else. A big part of my life has been God, um, specifically Jesus Christ. Um, I got serious about God when I was about 15. Um, we, I always went to church, you know, just went through the motions, you know, didn't think it was that serious. My, my parents were saved and whatnot, but, you know, we just went through the motions. Um, we, we had this retreat, and uh, I remember a moment that really, like, changed my life was uh, <clears throat> this pastor was talking about, you know, seek God, and, you know, he'll be there. I said, this is the one time I'm on a trip, I'm going to take it seriously, because personally, I've been dealing with a lot of stuff, you know, especially, like, middle school, you know, that was period where I got picked on a lot. I scootered, you know, I was, I was fat. I didn't fit in with the black kids. Black kids was always calling me white, was calling me lame, calling me stupid. You know, that's not what we do. So, you know, I had a lot of like self-identity problems. I had a lot of depression issues and stuff because you know, I kind of believed what they were saying. You know, a lot of people try to find an escape, to find their solution to their issues. Well, that's why a lot of people experiment with drinking and even marijuana and other drugs. Like they're trying to, they're trying to heal the pain. But what I've realized is most of that stuff just keeps the pain alive. Plus, it adds a new issue like alcoholism. Or now, every time you get sad, you just smoke, which ain't getting any results. You know, it, it kind of leaves you in a place of com complacency. It made you feel good for a short period of time, but you know, it's not going to help you in the long run. But that's not me. God helps me. Like I said, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. Just helps me understand the issues and how to go about fixing them. It helps everybody around me. I'm not only better, everybody around me is better. I've been able to bless people and, you know, everything I've been able to do, like I'm 23 and I'm already signed to Universal Records as a music producer. You know, people, people try to do all this kind of stuff, you know, just to get to the top. And I found that the best way is just seek God because he knows the desires of your heart. Just started crying out to God, you know, just asking for forgiveness, uh, asking for guidance. A whole bunch of things. It's available to everyone, you know, and just going back to that day when God, I, I called out to him, it was just like, I had this like unbelievable peace. It's just like somebody could have cursed me out that day and it wouldn't bother me, you know. So I went on and I was like, wow, like I can't lose this. And I just started reading my Bible and things like that. Anything I've done in the past, it's just behind me and I'm moving forward. So, and every time I go to God, the fruit is pure. And that's just the main thing I, I just want to tell people because a lot of people don't think there's hope. A lot of people just think that everybody is just doing what everybody else does on TV, reality shows, and stuff like that. There's a lot of things trying to get our, our attention. And it's like, at the end of the day, what kind of fruit is it bearing? I mean, you can love God too. You can go to God. You can go to Jesus. It's open invitation. It's not as hard as people think. It's not like I don't have fun anymore. People believe that if you're a Christian, you're stupid or you're closed minded and all that. But I'm still scootering. I'm still having fun. I still have my own personality. But at the same time, I still love God. It's just a continuous level of peace. So, you know, like I said, I'm still able to be intelligent, still have my personality, but at the same time, I get guidance for my future. If you ever have any questions, um, hit me up on Facebook at Bryant Concept with a K uh, Walker. Um, if you want to hit me up on Skype, hit me up on Concept Beats, K O N C E P T B E A T S. Um, or follow me on Twitter at Concept Beats. You can put that in slow mo. That was too fast for you, but. Um, that's pretty much it. Wow. What sound does the line make? <sighs> well, I started scootering back in uh, 2000 or so when they first came out with razors. They were really popular. and they had, I think California Cruiser is what uh, was called. My friend. Uh, Got one in the neighborhood, so um, I want one for Christmas. I got an oxygen scooter, the wheelie bar, and um, snapped the back wheel off real fast. But took my brother's B model and kind of rode that, and then uh, kept progressing from there. And pretty much everybody in the neighborhood eventually got scooters, but uh, my one friend and I, Steve Schumann, um, he we just pushed each other and um, we're kind of. People that started riding on St. Delaware, um, it's pretty much why I learned any tricks in the first place. Just riding his quarter pipe in his driveway or out in the street. Um, made videos and saw what was online. Just kept going from there. Uh oh, I think he pooped.
ready as I'll ever be. Who isn't Jesus to be? Jesus is perfect, and there's no way to... Jesus is the only perfect person. He made us for his joy, to be able to see people you know, having fun and, and living for him and appreciating him. People can go a whole lifetime, unfortunately, just not just not pay it enough attention. But I think everybody thinks about it one time or another, just who is Jesus or why are we here? They're just questions that he puts on our minds for a reason. And I think if you're looking for the right answer, you're looking for God. Jesus' plan for you is to be with him. He, he wants, he wants people to just, he wants people to be in heaven with them, but if you really think about it, you're going to heaven or you're not. That's it's a lot more of a consequence than people think about. I think it's really easy to be saved is saying that God, I realize that you know I, I've done wrong things, and you come to the point where you kind of get an idea of the whole. Jesus dying for your sins and you just drop it all to live for him. I think it's as easy as that. People try and make it really complicated and everything, but it comes down to if you believe in your heart and speak with your lips that basically Jesus is who he said he was, then you'll be saved. And I hope that people see, you know, we don't we're not necessarily preaching at people and I don't want people to see us as strong arming anybody and I want people to see us as religious religious it's a relationship it's not a religion so you're not you don't have to you know, go through rituals and do anything like that but it's just between you and God you're saying thank you for something that you've gotten as a free gift he wants to have a relationship with you and everything changes he can make a difference through you you'll see amazing things yeah, it's good for Jesus. <laughs> How did you start scootering? Um, the first time I discovered scootering, I saw a 1-800 commercial, real shady, and they were telling people to call in, give them your credit card number, and buy this like kid's toy for like $200 or whatever it was at the time. And this brother watched this show, right? Watched this this commercial. Some dude did a tail whip, and I just went berserk. I was just like, "What is this thing? Is it real?" I was like, real stoked to like get a scooter and start messing with it. I grew up skateboarding. I'd already been skateboarding at the time with my brother, and um, I wasn't able to get my own scooter until uh, I don't even know, like oh two, oh three, something like that. And um, by the time I got my own scooter, it was on, and I was just riding that thing all the time. It's crazy looking back because when I started scootering, it was really just Razor, maybe Micro, but you didn't really see much of them because they were overseas, so it was really just Razor. But now you have, uh, they have all these companies. I was skateboarding and scootering and trying to incorporate what I do on the skateboard onto the scooter, and um, then eventually I just made a choice. I'm like, I gotta choose one or the other because I'm getting older now, have less time to ride, and um, I chose scooter, nothing better than that. Super fun, super unique, it stands out. I'm happy to be a part of this new sport that's uprising in the midst of other sports that have been there a while, so it's great.
Leon Scootering. Uh, I grew up in the Sacramento, California area. Spent most of my time there, born there, lived there for about 13 years before I moved around a bit. My parents divorced when I was about two or so, so I never uh, recall them being together at all. Apart from how that had affected me, um, I really was just searching. I always knew I had some sort of void in my heart that couldn't be filled, and I would try to fill that in any way possible, whether it be with girls or being popular or music or even scootering at times. My life story is basically that I uh, searched everywhere that I could. I came to this point where it was almost like I tried everything. I realized what further time can I waste and what else could I try? Is it really going to even help? And um, I just cried out to God that day. January 1st, 2009, I gave my life to Jesus and uh, accepted what He did for me on the cross and how He paid for all the things I had done. And I put Him first and I surrendered my life over to Him. Everything changed. I was not the same person at all. Complete 180. And it's really awesome to think about you know, what he has done since then. He gave me a whole new purpose. That's what this whole thing is all about. 777, jackpot, fullness in life. I just hope that you guys grasp that. And don't settle for less than the plans that God has for you. That's what we do. And we just roll around, scootering, doing what we love. Amen to that. Jay Kershey in the background. I got the cold, and we're out. Peace. And I found forgiveness nailed to a cross Carried by a man and covered by his blood All for the sake of sinners and saints to be saved And I found redemption, a love without fail A purpose for living and a whole world to tell
ask me some ridiculously hard question that's gonna take like 20 minutes to answer that. <laughs> okay. You can't be too old to scooter. I think I'm gonna be doing this for quite a while.
से Michael Vitale, ETX. 